For years, their opinions and demands from their government have been ignored. They could contain their anger no more. The burning of the ruling party's headquarters in Cairo is perhaps the most symbolic culmination to days of protests across the country. Tens of thousands of Egyptians in the capital ignored the curfew. They attacked police vehicles and set them on fire. With the police unable to control the crowd, the military was called in. Tanks rolled through the streets as thousands chanted for President Hosni Mubarak to step down. They accused his government of institutionalized corruption, cronyism and repeated vote rigging. In November, the ruling NDP won over 90% of seats in parliamentary elections. The eventual outcome of these protests is still difficult to predict, but one thing is certain. Inspired by the downfall of Tunisia's long-serving president, these acts of defiance suggest Egyptians have lost their fear. A population long seen as being politically apathetic, a country which had given up on bringing political change. In anticipation of the rallies, the government completely shut down the internet on Friday morning and jammed phone networks. The scenes were repeated in Egypt's second city of Alexandria. Police were attacked and their vehicles set ablaze. In the port city of Suez, a wave of stone-throwing youths pelted security vehicles as the drivers tried to escape. There has been no definitive leader of this protest movement. Nobel laureate and pro-reform campaigner Mohammed El Baradai was one of many people down in a mosque as tear gas and water cannons rained down on the protesters outside. The army traditionally has widespread support among Egyptians, but there is an obvious paradox now that the soldiers have been put in control of security. The country's leader is also its military chief. Mubarak may be dismissing his government, but he's not going anywhere. He remains the focus of anger for Egyptians, who for the first time have made their demands so shockingly clear. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera.